name's Nina Barbudo, and I am the founder and I run Assemble. It's a community space for arts and technology. I also work for the Science Center and the STEM Center for the girls programs, the Girls Math and Science Partnership, and I'm the program manager for that. Assemble, as I said, is a community space for arts and technology, and we serve as a platform for artists, makers, and technologists to come and to share their expertise with our neighbors of our community of all demographics, all ages, all shapes, all sizes that you can imagine. And we bring people in from universities, from um, industries, and help to mingle and excite uh, the new populations with ideas. We invite people to come in and to engage in our space through experiential learning, through um, creative processes of those featured in our space, artists, makers, and technologists, and to also help build confidence through learning. So really using those words empowerment and you know collaboration to their f fullest. Um, we do classes here, we do workshops, we have monthly shows, and we also go out and collaborate with other people like the Neighborhood Learning Alliance, as is coming from today. We go into different schools and to do STEM programs and STEAM. We do a lot of STEAM, where it's science, tech, engineering, art, and math. So STEM is, you might have heard a lot of it through different government programs and everything and the big push because a lot of jobs, a lot of money, a lot of investment is going in how we live our lives and what is the technology that we are using and how we use science, technology, engineering, and math to improve that. Science, uh, this is, and the way that I like to explain STEM is that science is how we observe our world. So the sciences are like chemistry, physics, um, biology, and even ecology. So you're looking at the world around us, what we see. It might be our bodies, it might be this, it might be that. It's the environment, but you're observing. And then we use math to prove what we have learned. So you can start to do calculations. You can start to say, yes, I know this is going to, if I drop this from this height, gravity is going to set in and this is going to happen. So it's our truth is proven through math. So science, again, to go back to it, there's always a hypothesis. Oh, I think this could be happening. Let's try it out. So that whole process too. And then engineering is when we humans start to change this world around us and manipulate it into whatever we need to. And that's really where the designing aspect comes in. So let's say like, I would like to harness the power of the sun. Oh, well, I'm going, I, I can observe through science that sun gives us energy because it feeds plants. So maybe I can use some math and design and engineer some solar panels and maybe even paint that has solar uh, photovoltaic cells within it or something. So you can really let your mind expand on that. And technology is the actual thing that is created. We use technology to communicate with our iPads and everything else and the internet, but it's still a thing that is invented. It might not be a physical thing, but it's something. So forks and knives are pieces of technology as, as, as well are pens and pencils. So if you think about how we evolved as humans, technology has always been at the forefront. And so art comes into this as a way of communication. We need art to abstract things, to take the complex and to make it more attainable, to be able to transfer what it feels like through colors or through other things and so other people can share. And that also goes, it's more of a cyclical thing where you might observe and you might translate, you might make a diagram, you know, that's all through art. So art isn't just fine arts, but also how we are experiencing the world and uh, sharing that knowledge with others. Yes. So girls groups that we have worked with at Assemble have been Gwen's Girls. They've been the main group that we've worked with. And this past summer and this past year, we've been doing STEM programs with them. So um, things that we've done were architecture workshops where the girls actually designed their dream house and then we would go in so architecture is a STEM career as well and we had them take drawings from 2D to 3D models that they built themselves and then we talked about solar energy where they soldered and learned how to make a circuit and made little fans for their house that was solar powered so you know if you could solder correctly you knew that you did it 
<laughs> it worked. Um, so that's one example of a thing that we've done, and we've gone and done all sorts of things with them. And talking about science, where science and STEM topics, where it's really attainable to them. So making ice cream, they're making lip gloss or lip balm, and really making it fun and not you think about a scientist or like a white lab coat, but something that's fun and hip because science is in every part of our lives every day. I also work with the Girls Math and Science Partnership, and that's a whole another ball game. But as you may or may not know, women still hold like the 20% of STEM careers, unless you're looking at vets or nurses or actuaries. Women are actually, there's a lot of, actually, there's a lot of actuaries that are women. And I never knew what an actuary was until I started looking into these things. But there's, in the workplace, we're still a minority. And at the same time, getting these girls who are, let's say, age 8 to 16 to really, to not forget their love and wonder of the world around them and to see how they can manipulate it and not feel either embarrassed or ashamed to be smart or weird and it's okay. And to see how it's still relevant into their lives. I also, through the Girls Math and Science Partnership at the Science Center, I run a program called Tour Your Future, and it's really awesome because on the weekends and the days that the kids don't have school, we go into different offices and labs and tour around for two hours and meet these wonderful women who serve as mentors. And they explain how they got to be this person in this STEM career, if they like to travel, if they do all these other things. And it's a really great experience for all girls. And right now, it's, it's still free. It's a free thing that you can sign up for from whatever school district you go to. If you're homeschooled, if you go to a city school, if you go to a private school, and then you get to meet all these other girls that might be interested on these different topics. No pressure. You just get to see these cool places where people work do some hands-on activities, maybe graph some skin cells, and, you know, continue on your life and hopefully share that knowledge in your schools and with your friends. So Garfield is a very magical place. Other than physically being a south-facing slope, so we get a lot of sunshine, um, it's quite a community. And I, I moved back to Pittsburgh in 2010 from Los Angeles, and I had this idea for Assemble, and one thing led to another, and a friend bought this building, and then Assemble ended up here. And we are very fortunate and lucky to be here. Things are popping up here and there, all up and down the street. There was, for the past 10 years, people like, um, people have been starting galleries like Modern Formations and the Garfield, yeah, the Garfield artworks and other things um, have been here. And people like Jason Sowers and Sheila Ali, who have, he has Most Wanted, and um, she has the Irma Freeman Gallery. People are really trying to engage the community through having these art openings and doing things with Unblurred, which is the monthly art walk on the first Fridays. So something is always happening every first Friday. And we are continuously trying to engage and have something open. Just having something open on different days throughout the week is something really exciting. There's also the Sassafras School. They decided to move down the street, and that's a, a school that, it's, it's a, like a college education that you can get for $5,000, and it's more community-based. So you can learn about how to fix your house, but then you might actually do it. So it's a lot of hands-on and like application of learned skills. There's also different little antique shops that have been popping up, and they're either people who are artists or carpenters or people who have other other things in mind with their lives, but they have obsessions with antiques and need to clean their house. So I guess, you know, they're opening up what they've found and sharing it with other people. I mean, Spax is an awesome thing to have and awesome books, obviously awesome. And they have a connection to downtown now. There's also Catapult, where it's pretty much a great place for a startup, where instead of just being someone who's doing websites and being a graphic designer and sitting in your bedroom and like eating and watching TV and you know like doing everything at once in that one small space, you can come here and have an office space and have shared things as well. So uh, Roboto's across the street, which is really great, and things, who knows? There's no, there's no dictated thing or concept to this neighborhood, which is really inviting, I think. Let the people say what they want 
and, and help to encourage them to build the neighborhood that they want to be a part of. There's a new shop down the street that's called That's Smart, That's Sharp. And it's really awesome. And it's these three sisters and they live in the neighborhood. And, you know, you, it's your neighborhood if you take part in it. So some people need that confidence to do it because it can be really scary. You know, and think about how you can help your neighbor, even if it's marketing. Uh, you can find more information about Assemble at assemblepgh.org. You can also go to our Facebook page, which is Facebook backslash, backslash um, Assemble PGH, or follow us on Twitter, Assemble PGH, Assemble.com. Obviously, it was taken. You can also uh, find more information about the girls' programs through the Science Center, and you can just go to their website or braincake.org.